Greetings. It's anti-bullying week in the United Kingdom, and I fully support the aim of eradicating bullying for all. Now, some people will suggest that bullying comes from fear, that the bully is doing it because of some conscious or unconscious sense of inadequacy. And that might be true, but that doesn't really help someone who's experiencing it. So, as someone who has been bullied, I thought I'd share my experiences in the hopes that some of them might help someone to cope better until we do achieve a world where bullying is only a distant memory. Now, one of the things that your parents often tell you if you are bullied is that when it happens, you should tell a teacher. And when you're young, that can seem like quite a problematic thing because of the school code suggesting that you don't tell tales out of school, that you don't go tattling to teachers. To which I say, if someone's attacking you, they have abrogated their rights, not you. They do not disturb any social protection, be it the wider society of the country you live in or the smaller society of the school you're in. So fuck them. Don't play by their rules. Take it to the teachers. And maybe you'll find, as I did, that there are two types of teachers. The teachers who suggest that you man up or stop being a sissy or some other gender or racial slur. But there are other teachers, potentially the ones who unnerve the crap out of you, who turn out to be so hard on pranking in class and chatting and not handing in homework because they genuinely believe that children deserve an education, that it is something worth having. And so they feel the same burning desire that you not be bullied that you do. And if you happen to encounter one of the first type rather than the second, then Bear in mind that it's their job to look after you, to nurture you. So if they don't support you, that's their failure, not yours. Of course, again, in the moment, that probably won't support you that well, but maybe it will help in the longer term. And in my experience, there are more teachers out there more youth group workers, more adults who will side with you. The second response is to exercise your right of self-defense. If someone is attacking you, you have a legal right to defend yourself. Now, it's not necessarily the ideal solution in a perfect world, but if they swing the first punch, then you shouldn't feel shame at exercising something that is a perfectly legal right. But again, it might be something that not all teachers will support. But if you have exercised a legal right, you have not done something shameful. So don't to make an awful pun, beat yourself up about it. And maybe just trying will be enough. Because in the end, bullies are looking for someone who is weak. So if you don't surrender to them, they might go away. Although equally they might not. But the 
this brings us on to the issue of surrendering in a wider sense. I am an academic, odd, nerdy, geeky type of a person. And I was when I was a child. If anything, I was less socially adept when I was a child. But one of the ways I coped with bullying was by not letting it affect me. So maybe you can hold on to being who you are. And I realise that with the benefit of umpty tump decades of experience, it's a lot easier for me to say, just be true to yourself, than it is for you to do it when you're 11 or 15 or 23. But maybe if you truly hold on to it, that will work for you. And the bit of the bully that's looking for weakness will go away. But then again, maybe they won't. It's all a little bit of a crapshoot. But it's also the fact that they will, some people will tell you it gets better. And in my experience, sometimes it does. But also in my experience, there are bullies in offices. There are bullies in supermarkets. I still encounter people who attempt to use physical or psychological pressure to achieve their aims because they don't think they can achieve them in another way. So it isn't something that's going to end on your 18th birthday, but it does probably reduce. So maybe you can hang on in there. But if you can't, don't be afraid to get help because fear is what the bullies want because that's where they live. That's what's trapped inside them. So not being afraid to be who you are, to seek help, to be the best you can be because you are not them might be the best way of winning. But maybe that won't work for you. And if you do have to make an accommodation, then there's nothing shameful in that. Television, movies, books focus on people overcoming huge odds, being heroic, winning in the end. But the reason they're called escapism is because that's not really what real life's like. Real life doesn't cut to the end with getting the girl. Real life's about the bits that come afterwards, the bits that come in between. Real life involves going to the bathroom and eating food and washing up after you've eaten the food and very few explosions. But maybe there's something in one of those books that will help. Maybe thinking about how someone coped with the problem in a film will help. Because ultimately, it is about you, what works for you. What worked for me in certain circumstances didn't work for me again. But the thing that got me through it was the fact that I did manage to remember that I was me. I wasn't them. And they're trying to eradicate me. So the only way I could win was to not let them dictate who I was. To not become their vision of what they were, which, with the benefit of hindsight, I can see wasn't actually who they were either. 
So this was all long and very rambling because I'm a long and rambling kind of person, but hopefully it's helped someone. And if it has, then great. And if you've got any tips for how to cope with bullying, whether you're 15 or 35 or 107, then stick them in the comments below and we can try and put together all the tools we need to end bullying once and for all.